Welcome back to a new school year STF. Thank you all for opting in or being voluntold to be your school's STF. We greatly appreciate all of the work that you guys put towards this initiative, and we are here to support you if you ever need any additional support. So again, welcome back to the new school year. You'll see in front of you the agenda for today's August meeting. You'll notice a lot of different hyperlinks. So everything is hyperlinked for you guys to quickly click on and to access and review. Feel free to share, copy any items that you have the ability to share and copy with and disseminate this across your entire school site. So once again, welcome. I do have a quick little blurb right here for you guys to quickly and briefly meet the EdTech team. So if you go through the slides, you'll see a picture as well as a name and blurb about that person. So my name is Sahara Haney. Again, welcome. Next, we have the Mid-City Region with Brittany Davenport and Melinda Bailey. We have the Highland Old South Region with Shar Coates. Southeast Region with Shane White. North Region with Angelica Johnson-Smith and Felicia Gath. The Broadmoor Sherwood region with Nikki Washington and our new team member, Ashley Kalix. I'm going to pause so that she can go ahead and briefly introduce herself to you guys. Hello, my name is Ashley Kalix and I'm the newest member of the instructional technology team. I will be serving the Broadmoor Sherwood region and I'm so excited to start working with you guys this year. I've been a Spanish teacher for the last seven years and I've always loved including educational technology tools in my classroom. So I'm really excited to get to start working with you guys and showing you some of my favorite tools, as well as seeing what you all are using in your classrooms and schools. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you ever have any questions or need support. All right, so now that you guys have met the amazing Ms. Ashley Kalix, on the agenda, you'll also see a region assignments PDF. This allows you guys to see, of course, you may not know which region you're in, to kind of identify your region based on your, your school site name, as well as if you have a larger region, who within that region is your direct support. So as you guys can see for the North region, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Gav have split the, the entire list of that region. So you can just identify your site and then that is your contact person. So this is for you guys to use. Feel free to share with your principals as well. It will be placed in the Canvas course for easy access as well as on the agenda for you guys to always be able to view at your leisure. All right, next up, we're going to review the 2223 STF responsibilities. So the link is here for you guys for easy access. It will be placed in a separate uh, kind of forum on Canvas as well. So you'll notice it's only one page. There are three sections to this tracker. Um, we have the Chromebook checkout section, section A, communication section, as well as the required meeting section. So the Chromebook checkout section reviews and discusses the overall Chromebook maintenance, inventory, and distribution part of the SCF role. So you'll notice that we use words uh, wisely. We don't want you guys to do all of this on your own. We're here for support. We also want you guys to empower your staff to submit their own help desk tickets and to kind of help you guys with Chromebook inventory. Uh, so we did use the words assist and or complete assist and or support. So this is not all on your shoulders. Please understand that. Of course, once again, we are here for your for your support. Um, so reach out to us if you need assistance with any of these items. But the first item is to assist in our complete yearly Chromebook tablet check in and check out. Assist in our support school site with conducting a mid year Chromebook tablet quality check. Support school staff with help desk ticket creation. Complete Chromebook refresh by adding inventory to DRM and assist in our support school staff with test readiness check prior to state testing. The next section is communication. We share a lot of different announcements, newsletters, resources, videos, screencasts, the list goes on and on. So we want to make sure that these items are being shared appropriately with your staff as well as are actually being shared, right? So we are asking for proof of communication um, in order to show that you did either provide this to your principal for them to place in their newsletter, or you place it in your Google Classroom, shared it through School Info app, the list goes on and on. We know that all schools have various procedures on their campus regarding how they share things across their entire faculty and staff. So this will vary across sites. However, we do we will need proof of communication just to kind of show that you did share our Tech Talk newsletter, you did share a DCS announcement, whatever the case may be. The next item is to check in with your assigned facilitator um, at least monthly. Of course, they will be checking in with you guys more often than once a month, um, and they will be meeting with you guys in person or virtually. However, 
in the event that it's only an email correspondence, maybe they keep missing you or you're out uh, for whatever reason, you need to at least check in with them monthly just to make sure that you are um, announcing items that we're sharing with you guys. You're, you're doing things aligned to what our mission and goal is in the district and just staying current with all things ed tech. And lastly, check the STF classroom frequently for announcements. We're kind of in between if we're going to have a Canvas course or Google Classroom. So it does a Google Classroom, but it may end up being just a Canvas course. So whatever platform we're using to share things with you guys, checking that frequently for announcements is also a part of Section B. Section C, the last section, is attending our quarterly meetings. So we're only going to have two in-person meetings. This meeting, is, it counts, but it's not in person, right? So December 8th and April 6th of next uh, some, next spring semester will be are already currently in Frontline. So go ahead and pop over to Frontline, enroll for those two sections for the meetings. We're only going to provide one meeting time. Last year, we had two meeting times. We kind of felt like it was a little bit redundant for some of our um, afternoon attendees, as well as we want you guys to have a chance to meet with each other, bounce ideas off of each other, network with each other as well. So we are drilling down to only one meeting time during those two sessions. So go ahead and roll on Frontline. It is available right now at this very moment. The August 4th meeting is recorded. So of course it's not in Frontline. That's not a physical meeting, um, but we will mark you as attendant. We're gonna create a, a Frontline um, session on the back end and mark you guys as attended for doing the as a ticket for this uh this month's meeting but december 8th april 6th those days are in stone they've been booked they will be here at the pdc um the room location will be shared at a later date closer to the actual day of the meeting however we do recommend you guys putting in your po forms ahead of time not waiting until the day before for approval from your principal. We know that subs are a real thing in education. We are former educators. So just, we are giving you these days ahead of time just so that you can uh, plan appropriately as well as hopefully either secure a sub if you do have actual students rostered to you or plan to maybe not go to another meeting at that time, et cetera. So we do have these, these dates right here. In the event that they, do, that they do change, we will post it in the Canvas course or your facilitator will share that with you. And then under there, we have the acknowledgement form completion. We are asking that you do complete the Google form. Your facilitator will share that with you at a later date, um, just to kind of help acknowledge that you do understand these items are needed in order to receive your stipend. So that will be shared with you at a later date. Going back to our agenda, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to the next item, which will be the one-to-one -one handbook. One-to-one -one Chromebook Technology Handbook and Administrative Guidelines. The instructional technology team is highly recommending and suggesting that you do not distribute a Chromebook to a student until they have signed and returned the signature documents located inside of this handbook. There are a couple of different places where you can find this one-to-one -one handbook. The first place is hyperlinked on today's agenda. The second place that you can find a link to the one-to-one -one handbook is in the Site Technology Facilitator Canvas course. There is an announcement titled, Welcome Back to School. In this announcement, you can find a link to the one-to-one -one handbook here, as well as a separate document that has just the signature pages that the students need. So if a student loses their pages, you can use this separate signature documents document to print out extra copies of just the pages the students need to sign and return. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a restful summer break, or should I say a short summer break, because that's what it felt like. To those that are new to our team, my name is Felicia Gath. I am one of your friendly neighborhood district tech facilitators, and I support the North Region. I am also the district admin for resource manager. If you don't know what resource manager is, you're probably one of the lucky few that does not have the responsibility for inventorying devices, equipment, or textbooks into our digital inventory system. Destiny Resource Manager is a web-based asset management system used by the district to maintain student equipment and one-to-one -one devices. This summer has flown by and I did not get to all of the things with organizing DRM as planned, but I am still on the quest. Today, I would like to share some updates as well as documents and forms. 
for your easy access, I compiled all of the links to one document. So let's go into our documents. The first document that we will go over is our Chromebook procedures and documents. I'm going to give it a second to upload. So we know that we give you all the one-to-one -one handbook and uh, Ashley just went over the one-to-one -one handbook, but we wanted to make sure that you had the uh, proper guidance with inventorying your devices at the beginning of the year, as well as closeout procedures. So this document has hyperlinks to different guides and to different videos and resources that you will have available or accessible to you all in order to uh, know exactly what to do, especially for those of you all who are new to the process or if there's a new librarian, which we know that we have some new librarians in the district as well, here is just a guide or a resource that will help you through the process. At the very top, it kind of goes over uh, what you would do and the things to check before checking out devices to students. The one main thing is that we want to make sure that all students that receive a device has returned their parent consent form. The other thing that we want to make sure is that you are well equipped to support your students uh, or support your school with this process. So we have at the very top of our uh, list of destiny resource, uh, resources, we have this document that will guide you through how to plan out your inventory or your checkout process. This one is a beginning of the year Chromebook distribution checklist of things to consider and things to do to make it uh, go smoothly. And then also suggestions for uh, preparing your devices when it's time to collect them at the end of the year. We also suggest that at some point in mid-year that you all conduct a mid-year uh, inspection of devices. This should actually happen at least every other week or monthly, but definitely quarterly do a Chromebook inspection just to make sure that all devices are working appropriately and that there has not been any damage done to the devices. So this resource is available to you on uh, your the agenda. So if you go to our meeting agenda and you click on where it says 2022-23 Chromebook procedures, you will be able to see the uh, those resources that are available. The next thing that I would like to talk to you all about is the refresher. This summer, our elementary and middle schools received a refresher tablets or Chromebooks. Those devices have been uploaded into DRM already by um, our team, but we were but using the serial number. So I know that there are some schools that prefer using the uh, pink barcodes, and that is fine if you want to have them in there uh, with double work, but we will have to make sure that we uh, go through the process or go over a process in order to uh, do that and to see what would be the easiest way to um, do that. But all devices are already in the system under their serial number. So really you don't have to worry about using pink barcodes. You can just check it out to the student using the barcode. For me, I recommend if you are going to use the serial, um, the barcodes, I would also use the serial number because we know those barcodes can be peeled off. Uh, they get scratched up. Things happen to them that they're no longer usable. So that barcode would be what we would need to use in order to identify specific devices. And we know that there are instances where students are scratching up those barcodes uh, are those uh, QR codes for the serial number, but we are going to try our best to make sure that those uh, devices or equipment that you are putting into Resource Manager is working well for you. 
So speaking of pink barcodes, this year, like I said, I compiled a list of request links for everyone so that that way we are able to have a one-stop shop in order to know where to go to find specific forms that you need to request or how to fill out um, specific forms. So we have our pink barcode request form. And with this form, you are simply filling out your basic information, your name, your email, your school site, identifying who is your district facilitator, uh, what will the barcodes be used for, is there a record already created for this or does a record need to be created and then how many pink barcodes do you need i'm asking that you put an exact number because those barcodes are extremely expensive and we do not have just an abundance of barcodes so please be specific if there is a uh, if something happens that you need additional ones you can always make that request Another a request form that I want you all to, and let me go here, uh, another request form that I've just made sure that it was kind of updated as well as we're starting on a whole new spreadsheet uh, to have a clean start for this school year is the resource manager records um, request form. So remember, that on here, based on what type of record you're requesting, it will take you to that section of the form. Also, just the basic background information for uh, you or whoever is making uh, the request for the record, but definitely it should either be the librarian or the SCF that's making that request. Next, we have the DRM access request. And I know that this was something that because the librarians either came in late or uh, the SCF switched mid-year or they were brand new and they didn't have access to DRM, this is something that I, definitely we don't want to just pass out to anybody all willy-nilly. So we are going to have this DRM access request form that you would have to fill out your name, fill out your position on your campus, uh, your email, tell us what site you're um, under, tell us who is your district tech facilitator because they will also be a part of the process of determining whether or not access is approved, as well as uh, making, if you're not a librarian or an SCF, why do you need to access, uh, why do you need access to DRM? And then you also need to have, upload a signature from your administrator giving you consent to have that access. Now, this process is for our documentation and for us to give approval for DRM access. The actual access and password and login is going to come from IT. So you will still need to fill out a, um, you will still need to fill out a help desk ticket. And so, although it's not on this form right now, I am going to add that to this because you definitely need to fill out an, uh, help this ticket in order to make the request through IT um, so that they can uh, give you all of your access. But this document here is for us to give IT approval to give you access to DRM. So hopefully that uh, makes sense. If not, just um, shoot me an email and we can have a conversation around it if you need more details to it. The other uh, links that I have on here, we did a poster for Chromebook and tablet management. And so I attached the link for that and it just kind of goes over the do's and don'ts with uh, managing your tablets and your Chromebooks. And so hopefully this will be something that you all can uh, post around the school, maybe in the library, maybe even give each teacher a copy of it so that they can understand the do's and don'ts 
of managing and taking care of Chromebooks. And they can also go over these procedures with their students uh, based on the ones that apply to them. So that is one more uh, resource that you have accessible to you. And then the last one is the same document that I went over uh, with you all on the agenda. I also linked it here on this links page so that everything will be right here in one particular space. So I hope all of those things were uh, are useful to you. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email. Please be patient. I know we've uh, said this summer was much busier than I had planned. And so I did not get a chance to clean up DRM the way I had hoped to, but I am going to be working on that throughout the school year. And as things change or things have been updated, I will make sure that I will post that in our Canvas course so that everyone will be aware of any new updates or if they will be updated at the next STF meeting. So I'm so happy that you all are willing to come back and work with us. And for those new people, again, welcome. And we look forward to working with you all this year. Have a great opening of school. Hello, everyone, and welcome to what I know will be a great and successful school year this year. My name is Shane White, and I am the EdTech facilitator who assists and oversees the Southeast region. Today, I am coming to you guys with some important announcements. The first announcement is the creation of the fantastic EdTech University. EdTech University is to ensure the successful use of technology this school year. EdTech University is a housing of great resources available for not only teachers, but students and parents as well. Here you will find resources such as pre-recorded tutorials on the different EdTech tools and platform that EBR uses. This is a living site, meaning resources will continuously be updated as needed. We strongly recommend pushing this out to your teachers as well as making it known to students and parents. This is our chance to create and bring in community and parent buy-in and to better assist students and inform those parents as well. This EdTech University can be found on our EdTech EBR web page. Here is the flyer. And again, here are the, the links that will bring directly to teacher resources. Again, this is linked on our EdTech EBR webpage. Also, student resources. And my favorite, parent and guardian resources as well. Here again, you'll find things like Google Classroom tips, as well as Nearpod and Clever. Next up on the agenda is our YouTube channel. As I'm sure majority of you are aware, but just to reiterate, our EdTech team continues to utilize our YouTube channel, EdTech EBR, to provide screencasts on numerous topics, such as EBR basics, to how-to videos pertaining to different technology based tools and all things in between. So again, that YouTube channel is EdTech EBR, as you can see here. Again, definitely we do suggest subscribing to this. As you can see, there are multiple, multiple different videos and step-by-step -step tutorials on so many different topics. Visiting that playlist again will give you the different topics as well. Things including school info app to EBR basics, Jamboard, how to even create a screenshot or screencast as you see here in this video. The list is on and on. So definitely a great resource for you all. Next announcement is of course our EBR EdTech website. Our EdTech website continues to be a great stop for all important things EdTech related. Some useful things that you may find here that include nominating teachers and educators for that EdTech Spotlight, news and announcements, links to our social media,
back up towards the top, we can see that there are a few other areas in which we can also meet our team and tour the PTC for those who may be new to the district. Here you can also, again, find that EdTech University for those teachers, students, and families. The EdTech Bytes newsletter sent out monthly. Of course, also a great way for you to contact us as well as requesting support and much, much more. Final announcement for this meeting is, of course, the All Loved Help Desk. As a reminder, our EdTech team now has our own EdTech category within the Help Desk portal. Please make sure that this is utilized for when needing specific EdTech support. That will be found here under that request type and right there, that beautiful ed tech category. Please remember to allow at least 24 hours after placing help desk tickets in order to receive assistance. Also, with the start of the new school year, there are bound to be numerous tickets that will be placed and entered. Please be patient, guys, as tickets will be addressed as quickly as possible and in the order in which they are received our STF Canvas course. This is where we will... Welcome back to our STF Canvas course. We will utilize this course again this year until further notice. So I want you guys to get accustomed with this course. We want you to come here to get important documents that you may need. Also, come here to check for announcements. You should be receiving emails once we send out an announcement as well, but check this course frequently to stay updated to what's going on so that you can pass the information on to your staff as needed. Also, we'll be posting here our monthly newsletter, or our bi-monthly newsletter, I should say. It'll be posted here. And remember, we need you guys to share that with your staff. That is a part of your responsibility in getting that stipend is sharing important information with your staff. You'll find all of that information here, any updates as far as meeting changes, dates and times, everything will be placed and housed here in this course. So we need everyone to join the Canvas course and we do check the Canvas course to make sure you guys are logging in and checking the course frequently. So make sure you're utilizing this course as we'll continue to add important information to help guide you to be the great STF that you are. Thank you for participating. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Harrison, Director of Network and Operations. And I'm Katherine McGregor, part of the DTS eSports team. So we have some exciting news. October 1st, we're going to be at the SeaTech to kick off our EBR EL League this year. So that means EBR eSports League. And we want all of our schools to have a scholastic focus. It's not just about gamers. It's really more about the things that they learn along the way. So we're hoping to have workforce industry certifications, STEM skills embedded into curriculum, and plenty of opportunities for students to be leaders. Yeah, we cannot wait to see what content gets created by these kids this year. So, speaking of that, for Esports E-League, uh, e we want to shout out the first schools that are in. So, Northeast High, Struma High, Terra, Scoundville High School, Southeast Middle, Capital Middle, Jefferson Terrace, Dufrock, VDR, which is Ville Del Rey, uh, and then we got awesome help over at Flame that's going to be doing shoutcasting in four different languages. And then, of course, we have SeaTech where we're starting to work on building a studio over there. So don't forget, if you're interested, email us. Email us at esports at ebrschools.org. And definitely check out what all of our teams are doing on our website at esports.ebrschools.net. That's right. I hope you follow us. I hope you're ready for esports. Let's play. Woo! Davenport and I want to talk to you today about some of the things that you can do at the beginning of the year to get your students set up in Clever. So of course we already know that Clever syncs with JCampus. Teachers are not allowed to add or delete any students on their own. We are not able to add or delete any teachers here on the um, admin side either. So everything in Clever syncs with JCampus. So the first thing is to make sure that your JCampus rosters are exactly the way you need them to be. The next thing I want to talk to you about is setting up your pages. So we know that we have all of our different apps here on the district page 
But if you click on one of your pages here, this is where you can go in and set up your apps specifically for the students that you teach. So if this is your very first page, you're gonna get this little show me around guide. You can just close that out or you can click show me around and then you can start customizing any one of these things by just hovering your mouse over it. Down here at the bottom, you can add in categories, PDFs, links, and apps, all of the resources that your students will need to be successful just by clicking on that button and adding those apps. You search it by name, click on it, and then just add it to, your, to that page. If you are a pre-K through fifth grade teacher, so if you are an elementary school teacher, your students get to use badges. So your students get to have those badges. They won't have to remember their usernames and passwords, and that makes our lives so much easier, right? You don't have to wait for the STF or the computer person at your school to print those badges for you. You can go in and you can print them yourself by simply going to your page, coming over to the left-hand side, and clicking on Login Tools. So when you click Login Tools, you're gonna get the option to download student badges. Once you click that, you're gonna get a PDF downloaded to your computer with all of your students' badges here ready for you to print out. I suggest keeping this in a safe spot. When you print this out, make sure that you show your students how to keep them safe. You might wanna print them out on Avery sticker pages or maybe on cardstock and laminated, whatever you want to be creative with it, but make sure that you and your students keep these badges very safe because this is their personal information and their personal login information. If you need to print out a badge for one specific student, so let's say that you print out all of your badges for everybody next week, and then you have new students starting the week after, and you don't wanna print out that whole PDF. Once that student is enrolled in your class and they are in J Campus, you're gonna find their name right here on your side, hover your mouse over their name, and then click that arrow, and you're able to download their specific badge right there. So now you won't have to print out everyone's badge just to get that one student and it downloads right to your computer. So remember, you can go in to your teacher page. So you just go back to your teacher page here, click on the page with your name on it, and this is where you will go in to download the badges for your students, and it's also where you will go in to start adding in categories and PDFs, links and apps, so that your students can um, access all of their resources. Hello everyone, it's Angelica, your district Nearpod admin, and I am so excited to bring you bring to you today the latest updates and what's new with Nearpod this year. Starting out first, it is time to climb. Time to climb has some new amazing updates. Um, it gives you multiple options to increase your student learning, and now you can do much more than you could before. So first off, we have some new settings. Um, I know it's, it's quite fun to choose a setting for your students. So we can choose new settings from the jungle to sports all the way to the carnival. Now we know that Time to Climb is a speed game, but to provide them with some additional support, there is now a feature here that we can pause the game in between questions for discussion. This allows students to collaborate between answers and you can formulate teams for your students to increase the competition and learning because they don't realize they're learning during this. It's just gamified learning. And they're playing independently. Of course, we can randomize those answers. And of course, like we had before, we can play the sounds on all devices or we can just choose to have it played on our own. Um, I like the randomization of answers because it allows students to think instead of take a peek at the next person's screen. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this um, Time to Climb game that we have got going on here. I'm gonna go ahead as a student and sign in with Google. Um, it's me, I'm gonna continue here. And my teacher has started the game. 
And so we are ready to roll. I'm going to choose my character. I'm going to choose a little froggy this time. And I'm going to join the game. All right, I'm waiting on the other side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the other side. I'm waiting on the other side for my teacher to actually start the game for me. So I'm gonna go to my uh, teacher tab so that she can start the game. Right now I see that one player is connected and they are waiting and I'm gonna start that game now. So on my end, it looks like this. That's what's the name of this building. Time, you can mute or lower the volume to your questions so that the students won't get so distracted by the music that's playing. And yeah, we're at the carnival. I'm going to answer the questions to the best of my ability always. Uh oh, that one isn't correct, but it did give me the correct answer here. Now remember, we do have that pause option where we can discuss why it is incorrect. So that's another great feature for those students. Gives them the countdown here of how many questions they have left and where they are on the leaderboard. Of course, I'm playing by myself, so there's not even much competition here. And then our last question. done with the game. It tells me nice work and of course I'm the only one playing. I came in first place here. Congratulations to myself. <laughs> and here we are and it shows how many points we got overall. I can click on that menu option and I can end this session. And then remember it ends it for all students because this is a teacher-led or a live participation act um, activity. The next thing we have beyond our time to climb that is brand new are our collaboration boards. I love the new setup of collaboration boards. The collaboration boards that they have now has increased the accessibility to all of our students. It gives them options on how they uh, would like to respond to questions as well as how you can give those questions to your students. The newest thing that they have here besides our grid are our columns. With the columns, we can create um, KWL charts what we know, what we would like to know, and we can learn. You could also have students to um, divide answers up just based on team, um, maybe a specific answer where they want to drop and add. And you can add as many columns as you like. And once it's done, it's done. It also allows for students to have various options here where they can see the names of those people who are participating. If you needed them to, they can go back in and edit their responses. We still have the approved post option so that you can approve those posts coming in. And one of the newest features that we have are comments. Students can leave comments on collaboration boards, which I like because it allows them to collaborate back and forth and to ask some hows and whys of their peers. Also, if you would like to, you can also have it to where you can approve those student comments as they come in. The next thing that's brand new are the media features. Um, we want to make sure that we're reaching every learner. We may have some learners that have not gotten to the point where they are able to type, um, but they are able to um, deliver answers in multiple ways. We have uh, images here that they can use for pictures picture responses. We have videos where you can pull videos from our online library as well as YouTube. You can record a response and you can also use the GIFs, GIFs, however you say it, as a response as well. These are all optional, so these can be turned off and on. And if you notice at the bottom down here in the menu, it tells you what's available to the students. So whatever is on is what's available. And you see those options pop up on the screen for the students. Right here when they're ready to respond, of course, after giving directions, there's a drop down window to let them know which column they are responding in. So if the question asks them something that they want to know, I'm going to type into the no tab. I'd like to know how butterflies fly. And what are their flight patterns? I'm going to send that and it's going to pop up in my no tab. Okay, I know their flight patterns. I want to know what makes butterflies happy. So I'm gonna click on my want tab and I'm gonna type in my question. Let's go butterfly flight, too many teams. And I'm gonna send that to my want tab. And of course, when we learn something, we're gonna put it here. 
I learned that. And the students would put their responses in here. Remember, they can also choose to put their responses in as pictures as well by searching the Google Images. And it will do the same. You just send it off and it places it in the correct column. And here it is down here. Let's scroll. All right. So those are some of the newest features for our um, Nearpark Collaboration Board. The last thing that I wanted to discuss is something that is very, very, very important to those teachers, which is our Nearpod data collector. The data collection for Nearpod is amazing. Um, they've added some new features in so that you can see the activity reports a little bit easier and put them at your fingertips. It also still has the code available so that you can go back and access the lesson if it is still available to you, or you can access it to edit. You can divide the reports up based on the activities that the students did. And of course, you can view here the amount of participation. If we wanted to print a specific report, we can click on that report and we'll bring up our students' responses. And if we do go up to the top to the drop down where it says create, you can actually here go in and download, I'm sorry, not create, download the entire lesson report or student reports. When you click on student reports, it will allow you to select those students specifically that you would like to have reports on. You can have those reports say to your local drive or to your Google Drive, or you can print those out as a CSV file, a text CSV file, which makes it great for graphing. If you wanted to go back to view what the classic report looks like, they do have it available for you if you're one of those people that likes to see the old, and this is what our old classic report looks like. Personally, I like the new one because it makes it a whole lot easier to read. So those are some of the latest features and updates in Nearpod. If you would like to learn more about Nearpod or have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is anjohnson at ebrschools.org, and I will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Hello, my name is Shara Coates, and I support the amazing Highland and Old South region. Once again, I'm challenged with following behind the, the Techie Nikki, but I'm equally as excited to transition into Tech Bites just as smoothly as I did my region. So at this time, we are going to discuss information regarding our newsletter. If you guys pay attention to the agenda, I'm going to click the link by my name. And if you click this link, this is where you guys can also find the information as it regards to Tech Bytes. Here it is. Get all your tech news here. Extra, extra. Read all about it. So our Tech Bytes newsletter would be available bi-monthly. That means every other month. So the upcoming issues that will be available would be in August, which we're in August now. So in a few days, you will see our very first Tech Bytes newsletter. Then we have October, December, February, and April. Okay, so these are this is when it comes out. The next thing that we're going to discuss is ways to help you guys share the Tech Bytes newsletter with your teachers on your campus. So these are just ways that we've came up with or ways that we have may have seen other SCFs do that seem to work. So this year, as a part of receiving your stipend, you guys will be held accountable with sharing information that's provided to you guys. And Tech Bytes is one of the pieces that you would have to share with your staff. So one way that you could share it to your teachers is just by simply sending an email to your teachers. Um, you also can provide it to your principal to include on your school's weekly or monthly memo. I know whenever I was in the classroom, we had a Monday morning memo and it was often sent on Sunday nights and it just was an overview of the week, what to expect in that week. As I do know, all campuses as well as principals are different. So you will have to maneuver and figure out what will work on your campus. Some principals may allow you to include it there, some may not. But like I said, you could just take some of these suggestions and make them work for you and your campus. Another option is that you can also place it, print it out and place it in the teacher's lounge. And lastly, you could upload it onto Google Classroom. So these are not, 
just the only ways. These are just suggestions. If you have a better way, please share it with us. We would like to know because sharing is caring and we can tell other STFs, hey, this is working for, you know, this school. You can try sharing it this way. Wishing everybody a great school year. We'll see you guys in your schools. Greetings. This is Melinda Bailey with your 2022-2023 Ed Tech Renewals. So this is going to let you know what technology programs or applications have been uh, purchased by the district for use this school year. So hopefully you saw the buzz that Google is back. Google Workspace has been purchased for this school year and next school year. This will allow premium access to your favorite Google tools and teachers can exclusively use Google Classroom for all of their teaching and learning needs. If you need any resources on Google, please let the EdTech team know. Uh, we also have access to Nearpod again this year and access to Clever. However, we do have some applications that have not been renewed. Kami Premium Access is no longer available. However, you do still have access to the free Kami version. If there were features of Kami that your school implemented, uh, please let your district technology facilitator know and we can find a way to use those same uh, options that you had in Kami. We have other programs that we can use for that. And also Little Sis has not been renewed, uh, but these are the only two programs that have not been renewed. Hey, our Technically Speaking podcast will be coming back once a month so that you can come and talk techie with us. And we're so excited about this. And remember, you can find it on your favorite podcast app. If you have an Apple device, a Google device, you can even watch it on YouTube. We post it online. Or if there's any other podcast apps that you'd like to use, definitely check it out. And you guys let us know if you even want to come co-host with us one day. You definitely can. Just let us know. We'll plan accordingly and let you come and sit with us and record some podcasts. But make sure you guys share this with your staff because this is a part of your responsibility to share anything that we're sharing with you in the Canvas course. We would gladly appreciate it. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. Bye. And that is all, folks. Thank you guys very much for tuning in for the August STF meeting. Again, we're here to support you guys. At the very bottom of the agenda, you will see an exit ticket link. Please complete this exit ticket by September 1st. This will mark you as attended for attending the August STF meeting. So there will be a few questions. Just complete your name and then select your school sites. Hit next and you'll see some questions that are based on what was shared during today's meeting. So again, get this completed by September 1st to be marked as attended for the August meeting. Have an amazing August. Have an amazing back to school. If you need support, we're here to provide that. Thank you, guys.